Hello everybody and welcome back to another Climbing the Radiant Ladder series video. Today is episode 5 and we are taking on 3 opponents between the ratings of 600 and 900 ELO on chess.com. Just as a little bit of a spoiler before we start the video, one of the games I almost lost. So, if you want to see that game and all the others in this video, be sure to watch to the end of the video and then leave a thumbs up if you learned something or if you enjoyed yourself watching the video. Again, please subscribe. That really helps the channel. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the summer 2022, and your support helps me make more videos just like this one and more bot versus bot battle videos. By the way, if you have any suggestions for any new videos coming up or if you saw something that I missed in this video, please leave a comment down below. I'll read those. I really like to hear what you guys have to say. So, without any further ado, let's get right on into the games. Alrighty, so our first game, we've got a 700 rated opponent from the United States. Let's see, we're going to go with e4. Um, a couple ways I could defend my pawn, uh, but I guess the simplest approach is probably just develop the knight. Why not? Okay, so let's just go ahead and take more of this center here. It's always a good idea to take more space in the center if possible. So this here, we've got a very, um, it's kind of like a wing attack style system, if that's even correct. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to bypass taking the pawn. I'm just going to push um, my pawns into the center even further, just because this is giving me a more powerful structure. So this is his second move with his knight. Normally in the openings, we want to avoid moving the same piece twice in the opening. So I'm just going to develop a piece. Let's just bring the bishop here. So I'm not worried about him taking my, my knight because I do have my queen to recapture. We are all good. And had he not taken my knight, I was threatening to take the knight with the bishop. Pawn takes and then, or sorry, um, knight takes knight. Pawn takes knight, and then bishop takes pawn, and I'd just be up a pawn. He's attacking my queen, so I'm going to have to move the queen to a safe spot. And I'm just going to keep it centralized, so let's just sidestep that. This is preventing us from castling queenside, but I don't really have plans on exactly where I want to castle quite yet. Queen b6 attacks b2. Uh, generally, the best way to defend this here is going to be just to bring the rook over. Rook defends, because if you play b3, you actually really weaken your pawns here. And you want to keep your pawns in connection. You want to keep them connected so that they can do the best job possible to keep your position sound. When you move pawns, you create weaknesses. Um, that's actually what I was thinking about doing right there but we're not going to do that, at least right now. I still have one more minor piece to develop, and I'm looking at bishop e5. I don't really see anything too wrong with that. Play it, see how he re... How, I can't speak. <laughs> see how he responds to that. The move I would probably suggest is just bring back the bishop which he does play. So let's go ahead and take that. Knight takes here is going to be the best possible move. And let's castle, get the king to safety. So now my development is complete, and he's most likely preparing to castle here. Just looking around a little bit. Let's bring out the rook, centralize the rook down the open file. And I could go bishop h6. It's kind of a not really, doesn't really have a good point, but maybe I could rotate some kind of queen side or king side attack here. So if takes, takes, I bring the rook up. Let's try that. Takes, takes, we'll play rook e3. Just bring the king up. He's not going to do that. Okay. Fair enough. Let's take that. 
His bishop is extremely powerful here. I'm quite happy to get rid of that. That attacking piece. Let's play queen h3. Attack the knight. He moves his knight. Okay, this is kind of a threat, but not really. So, whoops, that probably was not the strongest move now that I think about it. C4 is a discovered check on my king. I can just tuck him away in the corner. I think I'm all right there. Let's see, you're going to save the pawn here. We'll just play this. Attack his knight, force him back. He's attacking my rook. So, let's... Hang on, is this knight trapped? If I just go here? I believe so. Yeah, so that's going to be a free piece. My knight is defended by my queen. So we are now up a pawn. That's always a good thing. And actually, let's take that. That opens up the attack on d6. Leaving this little bit wide open. Let's play this for now. Double up rooks. Strengthen up the position a little bit. Because this knight is undefended. And I would like to target d6 here. So that is defended. a2, he's attacking a2. It's defended by the knight. So we are all good. Let's attack here. f5. Try to break open the structure a little bit. We will take. Uh, okay, uh, let's bring the queen up here. We're attacking the rook and this rook as well. So potentially some tactics here. That does leave this pawn hanging, so I will happily take that. Got some checks upcoming. The king is pretty weak here. Yeah, so that's just going to give us a free rook. No problem there. Do you have a check here? Uh, that's probably not strong. Let's go here. Block the check. Perhaps I could have run my king up a little bit and blundered a tactic. Oh no! Um, <laughs> block with the queen, I guess. And we're going to move right in and try to keep attacking here. So h2 is hanging. It's true. I've got a check right here. Ooh, maybe I don't. Let's take here. A little bit low on the clock. Check. A couple iffy squares here. We have a fork. Just trade queens and try to outmaneuver here. I'm going to try to attack on the queen side over here. Bring up the king. And I'm going to pick up a pawn here. Bring the knight over here, and going to get a pass pawn. Get that promoted to a queen, and we are good to go. So knight defends. Whoops. And I hung my pawn. That's not good. So close. I got the other pawn. Run the king or the uh, knight over here. Win the pawn. takes pawn and we get a queen 
Let's see if we get a, a checkmate here. Whoops, miss checkmate. And there we are. Okay. So, a little bit of a rocky game here. Uh, I think I just kind of got into a little bit of time pressure there at the end. But we got the win. So, this game, if we go back a little bit, quite a bit, um, I think there were two big moments here we should take a look at. One was the Trapped Knight. So, probably here white is a little bit better. And this move is just simply a mistake. Once the rook comes over, the knight has nowhere to go. Everywhere is covered. So that knight was trapped, one apiece. And the other moment is a little bit in time pressure. So here we... Actually, here was a good moment. So he checked. Rook can take and the king can take. So the king can actually be a defender here which allows me to just win a full piece of material. And this was actually a really good comeback here. I like this a lot. And then queen e1 was probably not the brightest decision. Uh, let's see. So what I was kind of afraid of is if I move my king up, he's going to take this pawn right above here and probably get my knight. However, I think queen, or sorry, king f2 would have been not bad. Just play knight e2, block the check, and keep all my pieces. Block this check here, which ended up coming in right now. This was a fantastic fork for him to find so quickly. I just missed that 36 seconds on the clock. So I will do my best to try to avoid these mistakes, but hopefully in this game you saw how I was able to come back from losing a piece. Just move quickly and quickly mobilize your forces to get a lot closer to your enemy's king. This will give you a lot of attacking opportunities. And right here, um, this is a pretty good way to just kind of slow down the game and avoid black's queen, which is their most active piece, from causing any more damage. Just force the trade of queens. So here I check the king and attack the queen at the same time. If he moves his king away, that leaves his queen undefended, and I will, I will happily take that. So he played the best move. Queen takes queen, and then knight takes queen. And now, if we look at the, at the pawn structures right now, black has two pawns on each side of the board. I've got two pawns over here, and three pawns over here, plus a knight. So I'm up four points of material, and in this position, it's pretty simple to use your advantage in material, to take down your opponent, just bring your knight over, take down these pawns before the king can possibly run over, and we just get a one position here. So, fantastic game, Chun Link, very good game, and we just ran down till checkmate. Had to speed up a little bit, and then over here I just forgot about this pawn, just leaving the pawn there would have been fine and just bring the king up here. Once the king gets too close to the knight, we'll just move the knight away. King takes pawn, and this knight will have to run over and scoop up black's other pawns on the other side of the board. Game number two. We've got an 800 rated player. This game is a 20 minute game. Currently I'm just looking at open challenges and just seeing what's out there. So I kind of just got to wait around for whatever time control pops up. Okay, so here we have an early queen f3. And then we're followed that up with, or we follow that up with h3. So already this is not a super strong opening. Just because in the openings you do want to be developing your minor pieces. That is your knights and your bishops on the board instead of your queen. By putting your queen out like this, you allow her to be attacked quite a bit. So like right here. This is a very easy way to counteract a, a queen that's been activated a little bit too early. Is to develop your knight, and then bring it right in here to d4. So that was both attacking the queen and also threatening a fork. So now that the queen is backed up, we are free to further control the center by playing d5. 
This challenges the pawn in the center and actually threatens to win a pawn, which it looks like he's not going to have seen. So we are going to take that after takes. We are going to take with the knight, and already in this game we are up a pawn. So that's the game plan for right now. Following this pawn trade in the center, which is actually not going to take. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, so here I have the option to take, but um, if takes, I think queen takes is going to be a problem, then my knight could get stranded. So I think what I'm going to do right now is probably just leave my knight where he is. I think he's fine, honestly, and let's just develop a piece. Where do we want to go? Bishop e6. Let's play bishop e6. That looks all right. In the last game, the five-minute game, I got down on time pretty good. So we're going to try to avoid that again. Here, I think taking is fine. This forces him to move his bishop a second time in the opening. And I'm going to follow that up with bishop d6. Challenges bishop. If he trades, then I'm up even more time in the opening. And I'll have my queen, my bishop, and both my knights out in the center. Whereas he's going to have one pawn here, a pawn over here, and a pawn over here. So a little bit of a uh, iffy structure. Um, actually, something I'm noticing here is that if I do play this, my knight's not defended. So pawn takes and queen is attacking my knight. But I do believe I can just take the bishop there and everything should be fine. I do want to be careful that I'm not leaving too many pieces undefended here. And we're going to take that bishop right there. Up a piece now, in fact, after pawn takes. Just up a piece. I'm not afraid of e5, which attacks my knight, because the bishop will just move backwards, and we just won a piece. So, looking good so far. Right now my knight is defended by my queen, so queen takes would be a mistake here. When we're looking at this position here, Hopefully you guys are noticing that I have a significant lead in development right now. Both my knights are out, my bishops are out, and my queen isn't far from being activated. Already it's kind of difficult to see where that queen is going to go. It will depend on what my opponent plays. But the queen is not far from being activated, and I'm almost done with development as soon as I castle, really. So we've got a big lead in development here. And another thing to note is just how exposed White's King is here. White's King is still in the center, and I've already got several pieces with some very real threats coming up on the enemy king here. Okay, Rook A3. So Rooks are not considered minor pieces which means you should not be developing your rooks in the beginning of the game, in the opening. You want to be developing your knights, your bishops, and your other knight. So this move here is not the move we're looking for. I'm anticipating probably rook d3 to try to pin down my knight, which is a little bit of a threat, but not really. Uh, I'm looking at probably just taking e4, it's free, and if rook d3, then queen h4, check, pawn takes, bishop takes, check, and this king is just in a lot of trouble here. Just double checking, everything's fine. This is actually kind of 
I don't know, a little bit risky. I do have three pieces that are undefended here. So if I go here, might run into some troubles. Let's take... kind of curious to see what he's going to do in response to that, so let's find out. Leaving three pieces directly in the center, generally not a good idea, but I think I'm going to get away with this, <laughs> at least in this game. So knight takes e4, and we've got queen h4 check incoming. One thing I did check before I moved here was queen h5 check, which can be a problem, but here in this case I've got a pawn there, so we are fine. So rook d3 did come. I believe queen h4 is... queen h4 check is pretty brutal. I am leaving my knight undefended, but first I'm checking. g3, I can take with a bishop and check again. Taking with a queen would be a mistake, and possibly taking with the knight would be a mistake. It's harder to tell there. So g3, we play knight takes g3, which allows a discover check, so I can take the, take the rook and check again. Looks like that lead to checkmate pretty soon. So takes, probably rook takes, check. Not quite checkmate, the king can go to e2. Here we've got the big question of whether to take with the bishop or the knight. Personally, I'm not really sure which one's better. They both look good. Let's do a little calculation, so check. Uh, well, let's see, check. The knight covers here, the knight covers here, this knight covers here, so the king's actually stuck. So rook takes and queen takes. Just looks like that's checkmate. So let's go in with this one here. The only move white appears to have is rook takes my bishop on g3, and then queen takes rook, and the king is completely boxed in for checkmate. So, knight takes, I can go back a second, knight takes, it's a, a little less direct, but this one just got us a quick checkmate, so we're definitely going to go with that first. Alright, just a quick recap. Let's see what we've got. So this game was a bit shorter, and I think the big thing to notice about this game was development. So here we've got an opponent. They were pushing a lot of wing pawns. Uh, developing the bishop, good move, good move. Here we're getting a little bit sidetracked. We want to be developing our knights. Here, it could be taken by the pawns. So maybe not that. So pawn takes, knight takes, and then uh, develop your knight. We have knight who, who could develop over here. Bishop develops. And we want to get ourselves closer to castling. Here, developing another piece. I've now developed all my minor pieces. And then we had a rook development which is not something we want to be doing. We want to be developing our knights and our bishops. Those are the big ones to be developing. This move, I'm, from what I remember at least, this is pretty common around the 800 level. Bringing out the rook, it is a very powerful piece. However, it's only powerful when the board is a lot more cleared up or when there's a very direct attack. Here, there is not a direct attack. There is just too many threats. Your king is very, very weak here. And I have just a massive lead in development, which allowed this nice checkmate right here. Okay, next game, we've got a 700 rated opponent. So that'll fit perfectly in our rating range. All right, good development already. Let's bring out a knight. Got a queen's pawn opening. 
It's looking like a London system, actually. Alrighty, uh, let's put the bishop here. Prepare e6. I like to keep my bishop on the outside of the pawn structure, so that's why I'm going to move my bishop first before playing e6 to support the center. Right now, white has good control over the, the e5 square, which is a very good thing to have. Not just, in particular, the e5 square, but just having control of the center in general is a good thing. So I will play f, bishop f5. This does target c2, but that is a very long-term threat that we don't really have to worry about at the moment. So he's attacking the pawn. I'm going to defend it according to plan. We've uh, created a nice central pawn chain and a bishop on the outside of the pawn chain, which is a very important thing to have. Right. Let's just keep developing. A3. Most likely, the, the idea is to prevent the pin here, bishop b4. It's an alright move, but it definitely is better to be playing moves like e3 than perhaps bishop d3 or bishop b5 and get some more of your development completed. So a lot of times in this opening how I play it is just like this and then I'll put the bishop on d6 or I'll put the bishop on b4. Here he's cut off b4 so we're not going to play that unless we want to give up a free bishop. This move here looks fairly reasonable. Uh, another move is just hopping the knight into the center. Um, it doesn't look too bad, but I'm just going to keep developing. I want to make sure I get all my pieces developed and then I'll castle before I start getting really aggressive here with any move like knight e4. Main reason I didn't play knight e4 right now is just because, first of all, development. But second of all, there's no real target. It looks nice, but I'm not seeing a good target. We kind of eye up f2, but it's defended by the king, so there's nothing there. And also I am attacking the knight on c3, but it's defended by a pawn. So here I could take potentially play knight e4 and then attack the knight here. He recaptures, and he's got doubled pawns. But he does have rook b1 over there, and it's it's not exactly a complete advantage here. Knight g5. Okay, so here, this move here, it's trying to start an attack, but there really isn't any target here. So he's attacking f7, h7, e6, all of those are defended. So there is not a real target there. Got a counter. I guess just h6 is fine. Just kick back the knight. There's no reason to leave it where he is. Most likely we're going to see knight f3. It's a pretty good move. Just put the knight back where he was. He was safe and helps control the center. Right now I'm just thinking about a couple different plans I might have for attacks. The main thing I'm considering is after knight here g5, which attacks the bishop, really encourages a trade, but he can back up. I'm not seeing a huge positive there, when castling king side would be pretty nice, and then probably attack on the queen side, start something up there. Looks pretty good. Oh, we have a mistake here. Okay. So, developing a piece, good. Leaving a piece under attack, not so good. So we are going to take that. The reason why we can take this is because 
Yes, the bishop is developed and it is attacking our bishop. But we have a pawn defending. So because of that, it is safe. So he's going to recapture immediately. Uh, okay, so what that does is it leaves this pawn undefended. Which I could snag up right now, but I think I'm going to take... I might take the bishop. Just because I don't want to have to take like that and kind of wreck my kingside structure. So here, queen takes is the best move. No need to double your pawns for no reason. Actually, doubling your pawns ever is usually not a good thing. So try to avoid that at all costs. Except for, you know, losing material and getting checkmated, things like that. Of course, take the pawn. He does take with a pawn. This is not that great because developing your queen is just a huge advantage right there. Why not? So this pin, eh, I could kick him back here. Queen does attack, defending the knight. Actually, that doesn't look so fantastic to me. So right now, maybe takes, takes there, but his queen can get in, into the position here. Mm. Let's see. H5, queen takes, knight takes, 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 takes. I believe he's winning material there. I think I can just take the pawn here. Just calculating this real quick. So rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes. The queen can go to either one of these squares, but I can take that. After bishop takes, rook takes, and I'm just up a piece. Um, if takes, 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 queen here. Um, I'm still pretty well defended. I'm going to take it. Pretty sure this works out all right for me. Should leave us up three points of material, which is never a bad thing. Just want to be careful about that queen. That queen can activate and activate very quickly. I just question whether it can activate quickly enough. So now that I move my rook, I am pretty much committing to castle queenside, which I plan to do pretty soon. Get my king to safety, and then I can continue what appears to be the starts of a king's side attack. So now we have some calculations by my opponent. He takes. All right. And now let's see what he plays. I have a feeling queen of three is the best move. King d2, not the move I was looking at. So actually, this might have been a bit of a problem now that I think about it had he played that so let's bring the bishop all the way back I guess I can play bishop e7 ooh that's a hazard um so he's threatening now to come to h8 check and probably win some material I think queen e8 is good because of check I just go down here Everything's fine. Let's do that. So now here, I'm going to take with the bishop, not the king, because I still want to castle. Okay, so that... Don't believe that changes much. I'll just castle anyway. Queen is still defended. This pin still does exist, but as soon as I move that rook, it's all going to be fine. So then that knight is going to be free to move. 
Okay. Um, it takes a piece. Oh wait, does that complicated position? Let's see for a second. So queen takes, bishop takes, and I'm up two pawns, one maybe two, one pawn in material, something like that. Um, takes. Having a hard time seeing what's wrong with just queen takes. I believe that's just a free piece. This is tempting, but then queen takes. And he's actually winning a pawn. Let's take. Bishop takes g7, attacks my rook. We'll just hop up here. Actually, never mind. <laughs> I changed my mind. We're going here. Attack the bishop and take the pawn immediately after. There we are. All right. So a very valiant attempt at a good tactic here. It almost worked. It was... Probably could have used a little bit more calculation there. Let's go here. If recaptures, just knight takes. And we're going to rotate that knight right on over here to f5. And we're going to start attacking on the king side. Hope you guys are enjoying this video so far. If you are, please leave a thumbs up on the video. And consider subscribing for more Climbing the Radiant Ladder series videos. I know my schedule for uploading these videos has been a bit delayed. I think my pattern has been like once every like six months one of these videos comes out. Uh, and the entire reason for that is just that these videos, it's pretty hard to make them because of the way that Just.com is set up to the point that I cannot specify a rating range that I want to select a challenger for. It requires me to just kind of sit around and open challenges until somebody within the right rating range shows up, and then, you know, the time the time period could be anything. Like in this video, the very first game was a five-minute game, but then the games after that, they've been 20 minutes. You know, I just have to accept whatever I can get, really. Okay, king three attacks the rook. No problem. Let's attack his knight. And we're going to rotate right on over here to the other side of the board, and we're going to pick off these pawns. Hopefully soon I will be able to make a lot more of these videos. I'm going to do my best to do that. Hopefully the higher we get, um, the easier it will be. Players will be closer to my rating. And it, it seems at least that there are more players at that level. So knight c3 is actually a really good move. So I can't play rook to d1. I can't attack this pawn. I also can't go here. It's going to take me either way. So... Let's check him. Rook is cutting off this file here, so the king is going to be forced back or forwards. Just trying to see how I attack this pawn even more. But it's not coming easily. So let's play this right now. I don't want him coming in coming into my side of the board. We'll prevent that. He could play this. Yeah, I guess. But that would leave his pawns over here undefended. Not immediately, actually, because once the knight goes there, it's still defending the pawn. But it is getting a little risky. So right now is a good time to kind of plan out what I want to be doing in the, in the rest of this game. And short term, I'd like to start attacking his pawns over here on the side of the board. Let's play 
this. Suppose that'll keep him. I don't really like that he can go to c5, so I'm just going to cut that off. I'm not going to let him in. Um, like I was saying, the short-term plan is to rotate over here and try to pick off these pawns. Long-term plan is probably going to be promoting... not exactly sure yet. I've been thinking about trying to get the f-pawn to promote and just take out this pawn. As soon as I can twist my knight around, figure out how to get him to attack that. Maybe here, here, there. There's one pattern we can get up there. Um, I'll take quite a few moves. And then try to promote the pawn once we take this guy out. Or just push pawns on this side. Just a lot depends on what he's going to play. Well... Now might actually be a good time to play this. Move the knight, check, and then take. So let's do that. Attack the knight. He's the only guy defending the b2 pawn. Probably, yeah, knight c5 looks good. Oh, wait, I'm forgetting about this guy over here. Oh, no. Um, yeah. I can't really save him, so I guess I'll just have to trade him. win the b2 pawn. He can take my a6 pawn, and we'll see if there's any good way of saving this guy here. So takes, I could probably just go here and... Yeah, this should be winning. Okay, so for his last move, keeping the king over here is probably going to be the best idea. It's a hard decision to make, but probably going to be the best thing for him. So just checking for some quick little tactics here and there. But like I see this attacks the rook, defends the pawn here. Honestly that's probably what I would play, but you know, I'm not him. So we'll take that pawn. We're attacking the knight, so the only good square here is c5. And we are slowly, one by one, picking off the pawns. And actually, now I have a passed pawn. Hmm. Bringing the knight there, what's the benefit? Just attack him. I don't see why not. Just attack that. Just bring this... Bring this pawn up the board. how to do that. Not so clear. It's got a couple checks in here, but none of them seem to be really concerning me. Actually, can I play this? Just gonna push the pawn. <laughs> I think I'm overthinking this a little bit much. So I'm just going to let him do what he wants to do with the knight over here. I mean, maybe that, but I'm just going to check him. We're going to try to keep pushing this pawn. Okay. Let's move the, the king. That cuts off the knight from ever getting back to this side of the board over here, so... Uh, that is definitely dangerous for him. The only way out is, like, here. I will take that. Must have thought that was a free piece, but defended by my pawn. If you remember back to the very beginning of this game, these were actually the pawns we were setting up here, um, getting us a fantastic structure. This was the three pawn chain. Three amigos. Okay. Wow. This has really changed. So, uh, taking pawns is great when you're up material. Taking or not just taking pawns, but like trading down, trading material when you are up in material, that's a good thing. So, 
you know, I'm going to take these pawns if he lets me. I'll just keep trading pawns. That's good. When we trade down material, we're making my, we're making our uh, piece, or we're making our, what is it, game material, or we're making the amount of pieces we have left on the board a much bigger deal when we trade down pieces. So if I'm up eight points in material, and we've got a lot of pieces still on the board, there's still opportunities for me to make mistakes and for my opponent to start catching back up. I see this... Wait, is that any good? I think so. Getting a little sidetracked. I'm trying to figure out how to take out all these pawns here without losing my pieces. Let's take this. We can take that next. Uh, but as I was saying, when you're up material, it it becomes a much bigger deal when there's less pieces on the board. So right now, being up nine points of material, this is not looking good for my opponent because they really don't have very many pieces left on the board to contest me. Two pawns is probably not going to do a lot against all of the pieces I have. However, if we are at the very beginning of the game and he has... And I have a nine point advantage, but we're in the beginning of the game. There's still a lot of time for things to work out and for things to happen. And time to catch up in the game. Defended by the knight. I'm going to push this pawn. So, long story short, trade down material when you are ahead. I'm going to go up here, support the pawn's push. This is not possible because the knight attacks that. There is no stalemate, which is something to look out for because he does have actually three different squares he can go to. So he is perfectly fine. And actually here I can probably just sack the knight and just get a queen. Promote to a queen here. And we're going to have a very simple checkmate like this. I remember I pre-moved this kind of a checkmate once, and I actually got stalemated. <laughs> I stalemated the guy. Oh, that was, a, that was a sad day. And we've got a resignation. All right. So let's go back to the beginning of this game. This opponent played very well. 700 rated opponent played very well. The opening was strong. Here we had a little bit of a kind of sidetracking move. want to avoid that, and he gave up some material here. And just kind of walked his king over. And then here he did have a... he was having some good ideas here, trying to win some pieces. However, it just didn't quite work out. I did have enough defenders who were there in time. So takes, 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 and we have won some material. And then here, this can look pretty confusing and, like, I don't know, almost frustrating, I guess. Intimidating, maybe, to try to take out all these pieces. But you just have to slowly work your pieces in, focus on the weaknesses in the position, pieces that can be easily attacked. And from there, you just kind of wear down your opponent. Just slowly bring your pieces in prevent your opponent from getting too far into your own position to start causing you problems with your weaknesses in your pawn structure, and that will leave you well on your way towards succeeding in an endgame like this. Alright, so that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I will be going ahead and making some more videos of climbing the Radiant Ladder series and just playing against uh, lots of opponents probably around 1200 and below just to show you guys how to play against these opponents and give you guys some ideas on how to defeat them when you see them in your games. At the end of the day I really don't want you guys to be afraid or concerned about playing against players who are higher rated than you because everybody's human, everybody makes mistakes and hopefully these videos show you how to take advantage of the kinds of mistakes that you're commonly going to see at these different rating levels and hopefully you can learn a little bit from me 
and play some stronger chess after that. So, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and leave a thumbs up on this video. See you guys in my next video. Bye.